Hello, beautiful soul, and welcome back to chat and channel session. In today's session, we're going to be going over the trap that my guides and I have found with past pattern thinking and how as spiritual people, sometimes we get overly concerned about karma from our past and how that may be preventing us from creating and living the lives that we want to live in the now and enjoying them in the present and in the future. So if you're intrigued by that, I encourage you to stick around because we're going to be unpacking it and deep diving on it today in ways that I'm sure will be helpful to you and your journey, especially if you have found yourself as a lamenter, as someone who is continuously looking back or over analyzing yourself, your patterns and your journey, which is something that I have definitely been guilty of in my life and I have found is a habit among clients and spiritual people alike. So before we get to unpacking that and deep diving today, let me welcome you back if you are are returning and a subscriber, I really appreciate you being here. If you are new, welcome and hello. My name is Danielle, hashtag damsel at these enlightened edits of damseldesigns.com, working to help you understand and edit, if need be, your energy and to help you tap into the divine design and understand the way all of those dots are connecting for you and be more in creative control of the ways that you would like them to connect in your future. I am a spiritual channel, psychic medium, quantum sakem, and shamanic energy healer, as well as life and consciousness coach, metaphysical teacher, writer, energy artist, and so much more. And this is Chat and Channel Session, where my guides, and in some cases some of you, present me with a topic and we do a stream of consciousness channeling on it to help you receive more of your own intuitive insights and expand on your journey. If you would like to participate in the chat portion of Chat and Channel, I encourage you to do so provided that you are not driving or operating heavy machinery, of course, by leaving a comment, question, or review depending on which platform you may be listening to this on and or by participating my favorite way, which is by getting out a journal or the notes app on your phone or favorite device and doing some stream of consciousness writing along with me as I channel, in which case many of you find that you can connect with your spirit guides more and receive information and insights specific to you and your situation in regards to the topic that we are channeling on today. If you would like more help and spiritual support with this or anything on your spiritual journey, you can visit me on my website damseldesigns.com where you will find a myriad of types of spiritual sessions, including quantum and Akashic records readings and more, as well as enlightened merch, energy art, and digital downloads. There is also an application there if you would like to go even further and work with me one-on-one -on -one through a custom-built quantum sakem and shamanic energy healing container or life and consciousness coaching package. I would love to work with more of you in this capacity and as I said, if you are interested in that transformational healing and expansion, you will find the application and contact form for that always available on my website, Damsel Designs, that's D A M C L Designs.com, and or linked in the description depending on where you are viewing or listening to this podcast on today. So, with all that being said, let us dive into the meat and the crux of today's session. So, if you have been a listener here at Chat and Channel Session for any period of time, really, or if you've worked with me on a one on one basis through session, and more, you're probably aware that I am really passionate about patterns and understanding patterns and helping you understand them as we talked about earlier with my website and how I help people understand the dots of the divine design. So you may be a little confused 
as to why I'm talking about past pattern thinking as a trap today. But don't worry, we're going to break that down. I want to start off by explaining to you some of the inspiration for today's channeling session. So I was listening to a fellow spiritual teacher named Caroline Mice, or Miss, I'm sorry, I'm not entirely sure how to fully pronounce her name, but it is spelled M-Y-S-S, and you can find her through her books and audiobooks and teachings about the archetypes and sacred soul contracts and all kinds of wonderful things. She also has an amazing YouTube channel with expansive free information about the archetypes there. If you just search her name, Caroline M-Y-S-S on YouTube, no affiliation, but I am a fan and appreciator. And as I said, she did inspire today's session. So I'm sure you would be interested to check her out. Uh, but anyway, my guides had me listening to one of her recent videos and she was talking about the fact that as a reader and a teacher and a coach, people have come to her for so many years, but none of them have ever asked her about current or future karma. They all seem to be obsessed with understanding how past karma seems to be creating the situations in their life. And while, as I said, I am really passionate about understanding patterns and karma, I saw and thought about the fact that, wow, that is a problem. And I was realizing that's a pattern and that's a problem that I faced in my life as well as clients. And I started thinking about it. And yeah, I've been blessed that so many of you guys from around the world have come to me to understand the current situations or the reoccurring situations in your life, right? And to understand how karma may have played a role in that, whether you incurred the karma or someone incurred the karma against you and is showing up in your life. And I do find that a valuable and important tool to understanding the way these systems of the universe work and you know healing and truly healing and clearing karma and creating a better life going forward but I was thinking yeah it is a problem that we can become so obsessive or get ourselves caught in these over analyzing traps about thinking about the past that we're clouding out understanding how our karma in the present may be affecting our future. And I heard uh, Caroline speaking about the fact that if you believe and are coming to a reader or teacher to understand how your karma from the past is affecting you now, it's only logical that you would believe that your karma from now is going to be affecting your future right? Uh, but that's not something that a lot of people think about. Now, it is something that I have worked on a lot in my life, and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes, but I wanted to speak about it because as so many people are becoming more aware of the way the energetic systems of the world tend to work and the way karma works as sort of, in my opinion, a self-regulating tool of our universe, we can get obsessive about understanding how it's worked in the past, the things that we've done in the past, the things that others have done to us in the past. And while the past can affect us now, it is also important in my opinion to balance that to the way that we are conducting our lives in the now so that we can make sure that we are also conducting and creating a better present and future and not just constantly looking backwards. So I want to talk about the belief systems that may have contributed to this constantly looking backwards. Now, one of them, as I said, can be the fact that as more people awaken and start to understand and appreciate these systems of karma and try to figure the whole thing out in order to live more mindful lives, we are encouraged to look back. And in my opinion, it is important. It's something that I do a great deal, especially with people in energy healing. However, if that is our sole or primary focus, if it is our habit, if it is the only 
thing that we are focusing on at times, then we are doing a disservice to our present and our future, in my opinion. And this can also be why we have trouble moving forward in our lives or creating better futures. Because what have we been talking about in recent chat and channel sessions? How our beliefs and our focus tend to create so much of our reality, our current reality, and our future. And so if we are continually focused on the past and figuring out the past rather than fully recognizing, healing, and releasing it once and for all from our conscious and unconscious, if we are obsessing about it and or letting it rule over us from our focus points of consciousness or unconsciousness, it stands to reason we're going to be recreating a lot of that past, recreating a lot of karma, or bringing back a lot of those types of things rather than learning from them, releasing and or healing them, and moving forward as was intended. And so the belief systems that I have seen that contribute to getting stuck in this are, one, as we discussed, the kind of current popularity of spirituality. Number two, we may also have been raised by people that made us second guess ourselves and or we may have had very significant important relationships or traumas where the people or situations gaslighted us or encouraged us to overanalyze and go over things over and over and over again in order to try to prevent problems in the now or in the future and if we've grown up with this sense of lack of self-worth or questioning our reality because other people didn't want to deal with reality and wanted us to overly analyze things and take all the responsibility burden or blame we can have this habit where we become lamenters where we become regretters where we have this belief that we have to constantly go back over everything we've done, thought about, said, could have said, etc. in order for things to work out for us even in the slightest way, right? So for me, this wound really came from growing up with narcissists who were gaslighters and had other kind of abusive tendencies and personality disorders. And because they were not in an energetic willingness to take responsibility for the reality of what was happening or for their own energy, karma, or responsibilities, they tended to try to push that off on me by trying to change the situation as it was happening in word or name only and blame me so if I would have said something slightly different, then they wouldn't have done this negative thing, right? And this is a common theme among empaths, especially among caretakers, among spiritual and sensitive peoples alike, whether you've grown up with that pattern or not, or faced it with a partner, spouse, authority figure, boss, etc., friends even, anyone who gaslighted you and tried to make you question the reality of your reality and what you knew was going on could have helped you develop this habit or belief system that says you have to constantly analyze you and overanalyze you for everything in order for things to work out or in order to get the jump on what an abusive or non-energy responsible person would do in the negative right so that's something that we often do is we try to overanalyze everything a lot of times even before it happens in order to try to prevent damage that we could be anticipating because of having such neglectful or abusive people or non-energy responsible people in our lives and so we can easily form this belief system that gets us caught in these traps of past pattern thinking now as i said understanding and analyzing your patterns can be a wonderful thing and empowering tool and it's something I am very passionate about doing for myself and with clients in order to help us truly heal and release those things 
But if we are not releasing, if we are finding the patterns and obsessed with finding the patterns and then still continuously hanging on, that is when we get caught in the trap. And when we're constantly looking back, believing that we have to in order to move forward or be in the now more peacefully or even slightly peacefully, that's when it becomes a trap because it's difficult to enjoy being in the moment or be in co-creation mode for a future if we have that habit of constantly or only looking back or thinking backwards. So when you get caught up in this habit, as I am thinking that you probably might at times in your life if you are here, I want to encourage you to understand and in that moment, instead of going down the downward spiral of continuously analyzing everything from your past, take a moment, stop, Use the compassion key technique, which is from another spiritual teacher. Um, You can look up the compassion key. That is not my technique, but I do use it quite often. And that is where you say, I'm so sorry to yourself for things that you are experiencing or have experienced. This is especially helpful with narcissistic abuse and other things in this vein when you have not received or probably will not receive apologies for other people's behavior. So what you're doing is is working through some of the negative forms of tension by giving yourself compassion, giving yourself this apology, and releasing yourself from the need to blame yourself for the situation. And instead, after doing that, turn it around. What can I learn from this? What am I supposed to learn from this? What is the point that I am supposed to be noticing in this pattern right now? Ask that to your guides, ask that to the universe, and then release it up and let the answers come to you rather than continuously analyzing and searching for them. This is how you open up the door and let yourself out of that trap. Now, bear in mind, this is a practice. You have a pattern and a habit of doing this for a reason. That is a well-dug track in your mind and in your mindset. So be gentle with yourself as you form a new practice of getting yourself out of that ditch or opening the door from that trap and continuously give yourself grace and remind yourself this is a new, more positive habit you are forming by no longer needing to to constantly search for the answers in the past. If you have difficulty doing this, or if you know that there is a pattern from your past or recent past that you need to be noticing in order to move forward, this is where, especially if you have this habit, I really encourage you to go to a trusted uh, spiritual reader, healer, or a coach like myself, and we've already discussed the ways that you can work with me if you like and you are called, so that you can have someone with a perspective outside of your own and without energy or emotional attachment to your issues to help you find these patterns quickly and more easily and work through them with that outside perspective because as I've explained in previous channeling sessions, healing from within and working on your patterns from within your own current perspective can be intense and can be less than productive at times depending on the levels of attachment, energy, or pain that are associated with those patterns, traumas, or belief systems. And If you need to, please also seek the help of a trained medical representative or therapist. I love to work with people who are also working with licensed medical professionals, which I am not, so that you are coming at things from all sides and all angles and supporting your body as well as your mind, heart, and soul. Now, with that holistic approach and in understanding all that about our patterns and letting ourselves out of that past pattern, pattern thinking trap. I also do want to touch on karma and how we spoke a little bit about the fact that if we are so concerned with karma from the past, how does it not stand to reason that we become concerned about karma in the present and the future? Now, I am aware that some people are concerned about their present karma, but it 
does feel a little bit more difficult to think about current and future karma than it does to look back and kind of obsess about past karma, right? Now, of course, this is because hindsight is twenty twenty, right? We have a belief that says everything that's already happened is already there, and so it's easier to figure out and easier to approach since to a degree and since it's already over. And what's already over is less scary than the present or the possible future. So that is why a lot of people tend to obsess about past karma rather than thinking about present or current karma or future karma other than in kind of joking terms as a warning not to do something or a joke not to do something because of karma's sake. But if we can find that balance between Yes, understanding the karmas from the past and how and why it's bringing certain things or people or lessons into our lives and learning how to live better lives now so that we are, number one, enjoying our present more, but also creating karma for the future or dharma for the future that is in more of a positive vein. Because if you believe in past life karma, then you must to a degree, even without thinking about it, believe in future karma and future lifetimes. And while the goal for many of us spiritual people is to clear karma from the past and stop incurring karma so that we can stop that process of karmic incarnation, um, many people don't really think about how to completely do that because we get obsessed with clearing karma from the past instead of also stopping the process of incurring it. And so one of these other beliefs that forms these obsessions with past and and karmic concern uh, is the belief that we want to get off that spiritual wheel of karmic incarnation, right? And a lot of spiritual people, especially when you're on the awakening journey, we develop this way of believing that this has to be our last life. But if and when that is the case of this being our last life, that can mean that it gets really messy, right? Because you suddenly have to be responsible for all that karma clearing from the past while at the same time as stopping incurring it in the present in order not to live it again to a degree in a future lifetime. And I've been joking with spiritual friends about this recently because I'm not sure about you, but I have definitely been being tested recently and I've been joking with friends about how I did not realize it was going to be so difficult or feel so difficult to live a little to no karma lifetime, especially in this world that is so built on the paradigm or the self-regulation mechanism of karma. So many people are used to an eye for an eye, right? And that's all they seem to understand. This is also why karmic relationships tend to fall apart, because if the person only understands how to conduct a karmic relationship with us, when we outgrow that karma or clear that karma, a lot of the relationships do not have legs to stand on anymore. And so it's felt difficult for me to realize that I needed to and wanted to move forward in certain very intense situations. I didn't know how to move through them without incurring additional karma. And I felt really tempted, to be honest with you, to do things that may have incurred additional karma because the people that were attempting to do wrong by me seemed to only understand karma and that level of harshness, right? And so in those really intense and frustrating moments, instead of trusting karma to do its thing on its own without me needing to be involved, I felt tempted, to be honest with you, to do something to force the issue or to try to make them understand instead of just step out of the way, let karma do its own thing and find a different route 
you know, for myself. And thankfully, I have wonderful spiritual friends that we bounce ideas and things off of each other who are also fellow healers and people that I really love and respect. Shout out to you guys, you know who you are. And they reminded me that there are always things that we can do that will be empowering for us and that will be magical or spiritual without having to bring additional karma to us. And so I want to encourage you in that today, the way the universe and my lovely friends did when I needed to hear it in knowing that there are always things that you can do. And we actually did a shout out to one of my spiritual friends and went through one of the techniques that they recommend in a previous chat and channel session. So if you want to check that out, that one is entitled, How Are You Attracting Psychic Attack or Unwanted Circumstances? That is a recent chat and channel session at the time of this upload. And there is a technique in there that you may find helpful for that. But it can feel difficult, right? And I want to acknowledge that it can feel difficult to live in the place where we stop living those eye for an eye tendencies, where we stop needing to or feeling called or wanting to show or prove our power or our prowess in ways that are karmic because that is so much of what the world knows and recognizes. But if we do believe in stepping off the karmic wheel and in stopping, you know, needing to do things the lower vibrational way in order to make them work or in order to make the world work for us, then we can step into this higher plane of being and existing and receiving and it absolutely is and can be a transition. So be gentle with yourself in that transition, just like you're going to be gentle with yourself as you form new practices but also know that life and so much of everything in life is about balance and so if you have these patterns of constantly looking back constantly getting trapped in your patterns or only thinking about and trying to figure out karmas from the past or mostly doing so i hope today's session has encouraged you in looking to the present and the future as well as i do in all of my energy healing work using the past to inform your belief systems which are continuing to either consciously or unconsciously create your current experience while also recognizing what belief systems you are forming now by where you are putting your focus, what you are paying attention to, and how some of you may be incurring karma for the future by not even thinking about your present at all and solely focusing upon the past. So I hope that is a wake-up call to anyone who is doing that and that this has inspired you today through session to find that balance for yourself in understanding the past but not constantly looking to it and enjoying more of your present so that you can create a less karmic and a more dharmic present and future going forward. And as I said, if you need help in this, you can visit my website, Damsel Designs, that's D-A-M-C-L designs.com for spiritual reading sessions and for that application form for truly transformational energy healing and life and consciousness coaching work. If this session has helped you today, please like it and share it so that we can get more of these reminders out there to others on the spiritual path and we can wake ourselves and each other up out of those pattern and karmic system traps in order to be the co-creators that I know that you and me and we are here to be. I'm so thankful that you have been here today and I look forward to the ways that you utilize this information to create a better present and future for yourself and for our world. Thank you so much for doing that and I hope that you are or will become a follower and a subscriber here at chat and channel session. You can find the podcast uploaded to my YouTube channel at These Enlightened Edits, which hosts live weekly YouTube premieres, as well as on Amazon Music, Audible, iHeartRadio, Google, and Spotify. And on Spotify, there is also a low-cost monthly paid subscriber option. If you would like additional meditations and content, you can find and follow that 
on Spotify. If you would like to support the podcast and my work and chat and channel session in general to get more of this information out there freely for others, you can inquire on my website about how to become a sponsor and or leave all amounts appreciated donations through paypal.me slash DS Enlightened Edits. Those are not requirements, but they are very helpful in getting this work out there through the platforms and energy systems. And I appreciate those of you who do that so much and all of you for being here. With that, I am going to close today's session, beautiful soul. I will see you next time. Be blessed with love, light, and light codes. Love, Danielle. Hashtag damsel at these enlightened edits of damseldesigns.com.